Welcome to All About the Bass, another episode with me, the captain. No reason. Good All right, timing. Was fast that was enough? fast enough. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we're taking a little bit of a step back in time here, because for me and for many of you uh, keen bass product aficionados out there, you may be looking at the ME50 being going, Come, it's been out for a while, hasn't it? That, and it has, but uh, Dearest Nathan here was just, he was like, oh, I want to give it a try. It looks funky. And he's like, okay. Yeah. Um, why not? So this might be a good option for people. I don't know. Maybe well, this is. Maybe I want to pick so someone here, up. Here's, yeah. here's the sort of how the ye olde world of effects has evolved. Obviously, back in the day, individual stomp pedals did different things. And that was like hugely popular. Yeah. And then in the 80s, kind of. Uh, multi-effects units started coming out and and uh, for sure uh, multi-effects units were, were always uh, better value than buying individual stomp pedals and they became sort of more and more menu driven and digital and things like that and there was a bit of a backlash to people sort of for a while kind of going actually what I really want is I, I kind of I sort of want a, a, a a crossover product that's that's like got maybe some of the value of multi effects, but with the simplicity of using of of individual effects, which mm -hmm. is kind of where ME50B comes in. Okay, I think there's been such a resurgence in pedals recently. You know, maybe people just go, look, I don't need 50 billion effects or whatever. So that the sort of the pedal thing, it's gone back really now to either individual ped pedals being super popular and pedal boards being made up either with you know three or four pedals or if you've got lots and lots of pedals, people now buying those sort of gig rig solutions mm. that you know allow enable you to have dozens of different pedals switching in and out all the time, yeah. or almost completely software driven products. You know, like apps for your iPhone and things where you you know you can download. This. So th this is kind of like a um, this is still kind of like a very niche segment really of a product that's neither one nor the other really. So it, it is a multi effects unit that has the sort of the simplicity really of using individual pedals uh, but with you know the huge advantage that despite the fact that you've got you know 99 different effects in here or however many different effects you've got dozens of effects right. uh, you are um, paying a you know roughly the same price as if you probably went to the shops and bought two or three pedals okay um, uh, makes a lot of sense I kind of think that you know to you a can, certain you can program this a bit I tell yeah you. so well let's get into it so th there's basically uh, two basic modes that this can be used in uh, it's one is called manual mode one is called memory mode in manual mode it works just which is what we're in at the moment you see a little red light here yep. it works just like pedals so this one turns on and off your filter effect uh, this one turns on and off your drive effect this one turns on and off your modulation effect and it's really really easy to see you know to change them because you go well if you want the this to be uh, a bottom boost you would select bottom boost you turn it on wiggle a bit and you have a bottom boost effect and you turn it off again and off it goes okay the ones at the top here don't have pedals attached so the compression one is again you know you don't have a pedal to turn that on and off it's just as soon as you select one the light comes off okay. and the EQ is is just a, like an always on feature uh, expression pedal can also be programmed to do one of a few different things which we can talk about in a minute um, kick drum yeah I don't really know what that does but oh. we'll find out shortly uh, I like it the already. Other, the <laughs> other mode is called memory mode. In memory mode, you access by hitting these two. Now, when you're in memory mode, you have a more conventional multi-effects unit. So as you choose different pedals, you'll see actually m multiples of the effects will light oh, up. I so this, see. this one's got this one, this one, and this one, and right. this one's got just that one. And, but they're, they're also then programmable. So however you dial in a sound and press the uh, right button up here, mm. it will then remember that. And this has got the ability, I think, to store about 30 different uh, patches. Okay. Um, so again, it should appeal to either kind of a user, really, somebody that just wants a, a low cost way of having you know, three or four effects on at any one time. Uh, and it'll also appeal to the guy that maybe wants to have you know, lots of different kinds of presets that he can recall. Right. Tuner built in. 
Uh, great for practice, you can plug your headphones straight in. Uh, it's got a noise suppressor on the back here with a level, a separate level control that you can adjust. Uh, what else you got here? That's it, I think, stereo output. Headphones. So there's there's no there's no DI output or anything like that. So I wouldn't have necessarily that this is pretty much designed to just be plugged into your bass amplifier or into headphones, okay. or I guess into a you know you could have a separate unit if you wanted to DI with some cabinet emulation or something like that. Mm -hmm. So should we just mess around with some tones? I don't know if you want to just go into memory mode and see what's in the see what's in the you know, pre-programmed, or we can just noodle around ourselves with this, get you some funky tones. Listen, you seem to know how it works very well. So let's right. uh, let's just see what happens. Eh? See Hang what on, what am I in? Am I in memory? I'm in memory mode. Apologies. Let's just get back to manual mode. So manual mode is where kind of you just hit buttons and those kinds of effects come on. So we might as well start well, Yeah, well, let's see what it sounds like, shall we? So here's no, here's nothing into our trusty little Laney uh, Nexus combo. Uh, which is being DI'd. Yes. Um, Pre-EQ, so you're not getting any of that. So yeah, this is just flat. Uh, bass is a, uh, what do you, what classic do you vibe. A classic vibe squire. Which we chose jazz. because we loved the color. Mainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, actually solely. Yeah, just solely we love because the we love the color. Okay, and I'll just have it, you know, all everything up yep. full. So, cool. uh, you know, what's going on there. So let's start, we'll, we'll try putting a little bit of compression in. To, so here's no compressor. Well, that works good. Yeah. Well, it's boss, isn't it? It's going to be a good yep. compressor. <laughs> So that's probably a musical compressor. Then. We can just leave that on the whole time. So the no, first, not them. the first um, effect bank that we come to is called the filter tone bank. So this is going to have all your touch, wah, octave effects, and uh, EQ kind of effects. So Ooh, here we go, touch wah, touch wah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great because it's straight out of the box, it works. Yeah. You don't have to faff about I with it for hours. Agree. There's way more wire in this as there, than there was on that Sansamp thing as well, isn't there? It's kind yeah. of, this is what you, I thought the other one might do a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Octave, octave up. <laughs> Like it. And I, obviously I can adjust every time we choose one of these, so the level or the depth, whatever you want okay. to adjust. Good. This you might like. Slow gear I think is um, a swell kind of effect, if I remember rightly. This next one is supposed to uh, emulate a fretless bass. Are you serious? I have no idea if it can or not, <laughs> but we shall see. I can't wait for this. What's it actually I doing? I think tonally it's kind of making yeah, it sound. Let's um, just turn it on and off and see. Interesting, uh, interesting idea. Enhancer, which is usually just like a brightness thing. Good. Another couple of EQ settings here. So. Mid shape. Yeah. Oh, as in smiley face. Smiley face, yeah. Yeah. And hollow, which I guess is probably an extreme smiley face, but. Sound a bit of Hoffner violin yep. bass or something. It could like. be. 
So there are your sort of filter and tone effects. Then over here, we've got some drive and synth sounds. So again, I'll just do the same kind of thing. I think just kind of whiz through the basic settings here and you can kind of see. Stop me if you enjoy anyone in particular. Will do. High band drives. Oh, okay, that's good because um, you're still getting lots of the bass sound through. Aren't yeah, you? I mean, I, I, on some of those distortion types, I could have adjusted. If I go back to some of those distortion ones that were a bit unusable, yeah. If I, I can obviously blend how much distortion versus the dry signal I get and probably make it more usable like, sure. like something like that if you so then we're into the synth effects which I know you're going to love because you love all this kind of yeah, stuff I so do. here we go <laughs> The tracking's really good on that though. Because you know, that's the thing with a lot of these things. You're loving like, this, aren't you? Well, I'm loving it, yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, f fiddle them out with that. Give okay. me some different synth okay. sounds. Okay. Okay. I want, uh, All right, I'm, I'm here. Um, so there you go, all your drive synth stuff. Uh, and then finally, uh, actually, I tell you, we left the compressor on all the way through that. That's, oh, that's probably all right, isn't oh, it? I did tell you to turn it on. I know, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. So, and then delay and modulation. So, same again, lots of delays. delays because they are literally just you know different length delays but um, then we've got phaser oh yeah I love a bit of phase do you Thank you. 
never do that on one of these. <laughs> you just pop out there. Doesn't like it. Very nice. And uh, over here, if you, uh, the way you switch this on is is like you would a conventional wah wah. So you, yeah, so you <laughs> until that little red light <laughs> comes on, right. and then it can be a wah wah. Uh, tone control, resonance, so. A whammy pedal. No. Uh, and it can go the other way, so this is, this is now going down an octave. Okay. I think this next one is what's called sound hold. I'm fairly sure if you play a note and I put this forward, it just keeps the note going forever. I like that Very kind of clever. drone. It's and then I have no thing. idea how kick drum works, but one suspects. Pl oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh. And there obviously is some sort of way of... How are you doing that? Holding... I don't know how that works, to be honest with you. But that, so... S sorcery! That's your kind of run through of... What you can do with this, and and obviously the, the the idea is is that you would come up with combinations of those effects. Could be anything from one effect through you know uh, dialed into a certain level, through to you know one of everything. So you can have one from here, one from here, one from here, one from here, yeah. and one from here, Precious. and then store that in what we call the memory mode. So if we dive over to the memory mode yeah. by hitting these two, you'll see now that rather than these three just turning off, you know, corresponding to the bank of effects above it, yeah. they don't correspond anymore. They are just simply a selection. Now, what we call presets. We call them presets, absolutely. So, so whatever you decide to have on, what, whatever combination yeah. of effects you want, you store it, and this, this is, uh, yeah. you go through your And things. if you add the optional extra, uh, there's like a two button boss foot switch that you can add as an optional extra here. That allows you to step up and down through the banks here. So obviously if you don't, Ooh. if you don't have that foot switch, You've only got three different patches available to you without actually bending down and pushing okay. that. But if you plug the extra foot switch in, um, you don't have to bend down and press these buttons anymore. You can do them from the foot switch. Cool. So, look, it's it's not new. As you can see, this particular unit has long, done many demonstrations. Oh, at least three or four years. Oh, was that all? Oh, I thought you were going to say like 15 years. No, 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 no. Uh, not 15 years. Oh, three, well, uh, yeah, I'll, and I it, like it. And it's one of those products that kind of just doesn't really need to go away because it just sort of, what are you going to do? You know, it, the, the, I know Boss um, are bringing out product, may have already brought out product, where again, on paper, they sort of seem like better value because of course, if you do go down the entirely software driven menu mode yeah. and you eradicate the, I mean, ironically nowadays, the cost of building these kinds of units it's fu the, the, the knobs and the switches and the expression pedals and things like that are far more expensive than the, the chip that's going to do the, 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 the clever processing, sort of yeah. processing. So you can, you can certainly get products that are half the price of this that would do everything that this does, right. but in an interface where it's very sort of software and menu driven. And, okay, so and if, you're, of, if, you're, if you're gigging, yeah. you, you want some hands on, and, foot on. Yeah, and hence the reason I think that that kind of 
software driven multi effects unit has very much become something that you know the bedroom guitar player would use or bedroom bass player and the and the studio bass player might be comfortable with but the yeah. gigging bass player is either still using pedals i said or you know potentially this kind of thing it, it's it's hard to know. i mean i i suspect that most gigging bass players would go well i've got three patches that i use all night and that's it yeah. And I suppose the argument then might well, be... Well, up till now, until they've seen this demo, well, now they're going to go, hang on a minute. What's the most? What? Wait, what's the most number of bass sounds that you would use in a night at one of your, your most extreme bass gig? I don't know, like the Frost one or something like that. What would you... Well, well this is a funny thing, right? Because I, I, up to this point, I've not been a big user of effects. Yeah. Because I'm a very, very lazy man. Right. But do you know what? Listening to this, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, okay, I'm well, gonna, I want to use all of those. I tell you what so we'll now, do. So now, right, uh, it's gone from one to about 36. 36 effects. Well, I tell you what we'll do as a special prize for you. We'll yeah. make your own sound and we'll store it in here. <laughs> and then I'll grab my guitar and we can have a special jam out with, this will be the, the special Nathan King signature tone. Right. So what, what would it be? What would your... If you had to, and you have to have one of everything. Well, I, want, to, I want you to make it for me. No. No, I still, no. All right, I want, so you I liked you the compressor, it. didn't you? Listen, you might do whatever you, you like want. You like the compressor. I'm you, not getting involved. You, do you love the, you love the touch wire, I think, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it's my thing. You did love the touch wire. Yeah, I love a bit of touch then, wire. Then, what about touch wire and synth? Is that going to sound a bit weird? Let me, can I, no, can you, can you play good. a bit? I think it's going to sound odd. So uh, we should, on, we should drive. I'm in, I'm in the wrong mode. Touch wire and a bit of drive, maybe. I'm in the wrong mode. I need to be in manual mode. So let, let's, well, let's do these as they as they come up. Okay. Let's so do we'll, it. we'll get the filter we want. Right? Let's do it. Oh, it's good, yeah. You like that? Yeah. It's right. Um. Okay. So then over here, you can either have some drive or you can have some synth. I was thinking synth, but what is that? What does this sound like? Might be a bit weird. Yeah, I think that the touch on the synth are kind of the same yeah, they're, sort they're, of vibe. They're too so I think similar, better with a, a little bit of drive. Okay, on or something, we'll try a bit of drive. Oh, a bit of delay then. A bit of delay. Possibly. Uh, Having said I'm not getting involved, I'm you're, now you're getting involved. Now, that's it. So that's your sound. Sure. Unless you wanted a bit of wah wah, I'm kind of guessing it's probably a bit complicated to use the wire up here. This EQ, by the way, that's good. Yeah. Is that is that can you store that? Yes, as well? absolutely. So you can just how I've always wanted a sound. Right, so then we, we press the right button. Yeah. We choose which patch we want to write it to, but we can write this to number one. We press it again, oh. and it flashes rapidly. Somebody's going to be delighted there with it that is. when they plug it in. Yeah, that's it. So if you come into the store and have a demo of this, your first patch will be from the worst uh, sound you've ever heard. So, <laughs> and you go, I'm not buying that. I don't. I disagree. I like it. To be honest, with you, it's been ages since I've done a demo on an ME50 or an ME50. You certainly know your way around. It. And uh, but I liked Oof. products in these days because they were pretty intuitive to use. You know, it's just uh, you keep saying those days. Like it, uh, you making it sound like it was thirty years ago. Well, in the world of sort of tech and stuff like that, you know, three years ago probably is like forever, isn't it? I suppose. Right, so let's play something funky that you've just designed your new patch for. What, what, what's it going to be? I don't know. What is it going to be? Find uh, me a funky drum sound. Get me oh a, yeah, get and then we've got to get up. funking on this as well. Signature sound. 
Yeah, I'm auditioning bits at a time. Oh, I see, you just... So there you go, the, uh, the, the not so new but still wonderfully fun Boss ME50B. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find out more about these. Uh, they're insanely good value, you know, what do you pay for a pedal nowadays? 50 to 100 pounds? Well, you can, well to be you honest know, with you, more. We're, we're looking at pedals, we're looking at single pedals sometimes that are 250, 280 quid. So dearer than one of these. Yes, yeah. you'd like, yes it's kind of crazy, isn't it, when you, well, the same goes to be, we talk about this all the time, don't we? It's like, you know, the, the value end of the market is so strong now, you know, it's like this, it's, it's such a compelling piece of kit, isn't it? It's like, what's not to like about that? Yeah. I, I, think, I think the only thing that people could say against this is, is that you go, it's got too much on it. Right. You know, so almost like you can't really go, it's not got enough for me, or it's like, it doesn't do enough for me. But there we are. So look, that's it, Boss ME50B. I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration with Nathan and the classic Vibe bass. Uh, In here. lovely silver. Yeah, which I like a lot. I'm a big fan of classic Vibe. Even, oh, even the free cellophane. Off. Anyway, I've been the captain. And I've been the... Perfect. <laughs> Laters. Ta-da!